I mean, I wish he'd known, you know, all the meat came from Lubashkins. I mean, he might as well have been eating roast pork. Um, that's how kosher it was, okay? Um, you know, I mean, these animals were running around with their throat with their throats hanging out for three and four minutes. There was no neat second cut. I mean, it was preposterous. These were a bunch of paid-off, quote-unquote, rabbis. They were, you know, nothing more than mafia scum masquerading as rabbis. Um, and then, of course, you know, people working uh, 12 to 16 hours a day for six, starting at $6.12 an hour, um, sexual exploitation. I, I, I was delighted when the Lubashkin son managing the place, is, I think he's up for 9,300 and something odd counts of egregious violation of child labor. I mean, we just wouldn't know. We wouldn't know the fact that in New Bedford the workers were locked into the factory all day long um, or that uh, if a person spent more than two minutes in a toilet, there was one toilet for 500 workers, or if a person spent more than two minutes in the toilet, they were fined $25. So the ice raids are, ice raids are really important. But, you know, mostly you get, um, you get either no coverage, or you get sob stories, or you get expressions of outrage. Now, I mean, now the new thing is, you know, with Nancy Pelosi and everyone saying, you know, that ice raids are un-American, you know. Since, you know, since when? You know, I mean, you know, I grew, grew up watching Elliot Ness. <laughs> you know, I was I was a federal agent knocking the door in with an axe. It was really cool. You know, coming in with, with Tommy guns. That was, you know, that was pretty nifty. Um, but anyway, suddenly, like ice raids are really bad. Um, but there's, I mean, there's no coverage at all. And then, uh, then, and then on the other hand, you get, um, you know, you get, I, I mean, you know, you, you you get sort of the Fox attempt to answer it. But, it, I mean, most of those people are pretty stupid. I mean, the one person who's pretty good, is, I guess, is Dobbs. Um, but even he can get a, a little sneery, so it doesn't kind of help. Um, but I would say, yeah, he's probably the best we've got out there. Um, uh, interestingly enough, you know, at the Times, um, every once in a while, you get a really good piece. I mean, not, not obviously the ed editorially, but Paul Krugman, um, you know, who's a smart guy. I mean, whatever one thinks of him. Otherwise. Um, has made the case that we cannot afford this immigration and that Social Security will, will be bankrupted by it. Uh, Nicholas Kristof, you know, the Times resident humanitarian, um, has made the same argument, that this is compassion we can't afford. Um, but, you know, with a handful of exceptions, or say Mickey Callis on Slate, um, it's, it's very hard to find people who will come out and speak about this. Um, because so the, the taboo against being on the wrong side you know, it means you're not going to get in. You know, people don't like want to invite you to their next um, their next party. You're gonna you're you're gonna be you know put in proto or something. I mean, it's. Let me it, stop you there for a second. Um, <clears throat> seems to me that the primary reason for the near unanimity of elite uh, treatment and uh, opinion on this issue is because elites are so conditioned that anything that even connotes or the slightest smack of racism is to be fled from and abjured. And so yes, because I, I think that's absolutely that's, fun, that's fundamental. That's and the other, the other thing I, I, would, I would say is that there are also, you know, what I would call post-Americans. Keep, keep going on post-Americanism. In a way, I think that is the great dividing line um, between, say, people who take my position on immigration that is to say, you know, we believe in the rule of law, we believe in legal immigration, we believe in getting the numbers down. You know, I'm not against immigration, it's just way too high. Um, I believe in something like the Canadian point system, I believe in something more meritocratic. Um, but I think that a lot of folks in the elite, whether they're people who, say, are officers in the billion-dollar foundations, or academic types, or human relations experts, or corporate people, um, they are already, they tend to think of themselves as multilateralists, universalists. Um, they regard the nation state as kind of old fashioned and done with. And I don't think they see themselves fundamentally as American. I don't see, I don't see them as people who see their sense of. I mean, I think one's fundamental sense of civic identity, how you see yourself in relation to the polity, the nation, is really, I think, the driving force in this debate. I mean, I am an American. I see myself, my identity is as, an, my first identity is, that, is as an American. Um, and 
my first concern is the is the well being of my fellow citizens. Now that's not to say that I don't believe in human rights. I worked as executive director of the American Anti Slavery Group. I was involved in issues in Chad and the Sudan. I mean doesn't mean I'm not concerned about Israel. I'm not concerned about I mean obviously I'm concerned about I mean, my moral sense doesn't stop at the border, but I believe that one's ethics begin at home. I think, you know, it starts with one's loyalty to one's family and to one's faith and to one's country. Um, And then, yes, afterwards, there are other things that I'm loyal to. There are other things that I'm loyal to. We all have lots of loyalties, and we have very complex identities. But my primary identity is an American, and so I can't. I find it impossible to understand why, say, Gideon Aronoff at Hyas is so particularly concerned about the fate of illegal Mexicans who have crossed our border, rather than the impoverished, unemployed, or working poor in this country whose jobs are being threatened by that by that person. I mean, immigration is a zero-sum game. You have to pick sides. You really do. There's no way of getting around it. Um, And for me, it's very simple. I pick first my countrymen, and I think that those on the other side don't care. It doesn't matter. Or else, in fact, it goes much more the other way, that there's a kind of animus against this country um, that that they're, they're, they're over-sympathizing with Mexicans or Central Americans is an expression of disdain for America, even though that disdain is, in, in, in the end, is impacting the least and most vulnerable among us. You know, old people who still have to work, young people trying to get into the workplace, African Americans in general who have been experiencing unemployment levels, uh, of the Great Depression so far as in over the last 30 to 40 years. I mean, the Great Depression was only 22%. It's been running 40% for black men between 9 and 40 for as long as, I've, as long as I've known anything about public policy. So I really do think that this is the fundamental divide. Um, Let me stop you there and ask you a question. <clears throat> Where do you think happy Americans come out on the issue of immigration? Where so are fundamentally basically happy with happy. being yeah um, happy I, I, they're I, American I, citizens happy Americans um, yeah there are people who basically feel fulfilled in their lives and, yeah. and so on I think yeah. so with me look I mean yeah. I mean the great majority of Americans are happy <laughs> happy or extremely depressed are with me <laughs> but yes, I, mean, <laughs> I mean you know even the ones who are taking God knows how much you know they're going to their psychopharmacologists every other day. Uh, uh, are on my side. I mean, no, I, I think happy Americans um, feel very strongly on this issue. And by the way, even Americans who feel aggrievement. I mean, there's no group in this country more opposed to this immigration policy than blacks, because it's killing them. They, I mean, it's no mystery. And by the way, what's also fascinating, and, and, and a lot of people don't know, is that uh, we use Zogby polling a lot. Zogby's very good, and Scott Rasmussen. And Zogby did a poll for us. 77% of, of it was a random sampling of Hispanics. It was a pretty good sampling. It was 2,000 plus. 77% do not want the immigration of any more unskilled labor. That is to say, any more of their own. Because it's, yeah. it's threatens their own very tenuous hold on the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. Um... I mean, but, you know, as I say, it really is, you know, those people who, you know, we were talking about them before, who fall over backwards, you know, to want to be loved by people of color and want to be loved by Muslims and want to be loved by anyone whose skin tone is darker, um, and particularly um, who feel somehow fundamentally ashamed to be Americans, who feel that somehow we need to apologize for, for who we are, whether it's because we're white or because we're, we simply belong to this culture and this society, which... I love, which I happen to love deeply, those people are all in favor of this um, because it's somehow seen as some, sort of, some, some kind of justifiable retribution and that we should be more sympathetic to, to illegal immigrants than... I mean, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. 